Okay, this video will be a close-up of the rotator cuff muscles and how they insert on the uh, humerus. I'll go into more detail about the humerus uh, and the arm compartment in uh, yet another video, but let's just talk about the rotator cuff for a moment. So your humerus has uh, the smooth articular surface, right? And then it's got these uh, kind of, so this would be, I'll draw this as um, a right. So this would be my right humerus, a glenoid here. Then it's got these, this sort of large outer bump, a tubercle, and then a lesser little bump, a tubercle there. And the tubercles kind of go down the front of the humerus, right? They trail down like that. So this would be, um, that's the anatomic neck of the humerus, where that ball sort of dips over there. I've been told, or I tell students, that uh, it, it looks like an ice cream cone. Uh, oh, I know, in radiology class, we used to think of that. Like an ice cream cone, your ice cream's melting and slipping off the side. You got your greater tubercle and your lesser tubercle. And then down here, you'll have your deltoid tuberosity along the, the shaft. And you've got this intertubercular groove and then as it goes down, the intertubercular groove has these uh, lips, uh, this ridge. So it's got one, the floor, and then two, uh, the three edges. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then this part is usually referred to around here as the uh, surgical neck. Anatomic neck and the surgical neck of the um, humerus. It doesn't look like neck. It looks like I wrote neon, but whatever. So let's talk about where the rotator cuff muscles. So remember your glenoid, uh, glenoid fossa will be here and then you've got your coracoid and your chromium up here and uh, this is going to be where we go. Now your coracoid process is going to have your pec minor come down and then you're going to have your coracobrachialis that's going to insert and uh, the, the uh, short head of the biceps brachii is going to insert there. And then at this uh, supraglenoid tubercle, you're going to have a structure called the, the long head of the biceps brachii. That long tendon is going to run and dip down between the greater and lesser tubercles in that intertubercular groove. That's where your the long head of your biceps sits. And the short head, of course, coming from uh, the coracoid. Now let's talk about kind of close up here. Maybe we'll try another color. Let's try our best. So running from the deep surface or the, the anterior surface of the scapula and running out uh, to the lesser tubercle and inserting here will be your subscapularis. Right? Subscapularis, uh, the S in sits. Right? And then from the, um, the posterior aspect, it would be an easier way to draw that, but on the the greater tubercle, there uh, you're going to see your coming through this little tunnel here and sitting on the greater tubercle is going to be your supraspinatus, which is the other S for sits. And then just behind that will be the infraspinatus and on the greater tubercle, the teres minor, right? And then this S. And they're going to come out and they're going to cap the entire head of the uh, humerus in that in that cuff and over I, you know obviously the scale this is a little space a little more space but the biceps brachii is also uh, in there and the um the coracobrachialis and the pec but they're going to form part of the rotator uh, these four will form the rotate rotator cuff now on your greater tubercle if you look at that from say the rear, so let's draw, let's flip this over. Here's the head, anatomic neck. And then as I go, out a little bit, there's your greater tubercle peeking out and then down, All right? So this would be the posterior aspect of that. So your greater tubercle is peeking out there. It's got this little facet along the top and then sort of a middle facet and then an inferior facet. So along the back of that greater tubercle right there. Subscapular is gonna hit that um, lesser tubercle and the greater tubercle right over the top is gonna come over and insert on that superior facet, superior facet with the greater tubercle of the humerus, that's gonna be your supraspinatus muscle. 
The middle facet running from down here from below, it's quite a big muscle, is going to insert the infraspinatus on that middle facet greater tubercle to humerus. And then on that lesser facet of the greater uh, tubercle to humerus, you'll get that teres minor. So you can see how they really wrap around, and that subscapularis is actually is pretty wide uh, where it inserts along that uh, or into the um, lesser tubercle. So those four muscles are the rotator cuff, and they're going to um, be a lot of in, they're going to hold the, the head of the humerus in the glenoid, and they're going to do a lot of internal external rotations, and they are prone to injury quite a bit. You can get a little tear, uh, superior lateral tear from anterior to posterior slap lesion up here in the supraspinatus is very common to injure or tear that muscle. It's very common to get an injury here, so the long head of the biceps brachii is either injured or pops out of that groove. Short head of the biceps or the coracoid process or the subscapularis are all prone to injury. You need a lot of uh, infraspinatus and teres minor, obviously, uh, they can be injured as well, but the most common injury to your uh, rotator cuff muscles, this, well, I see the most often, I guess, it's just anecdotal be for me, supraspinatus. Uh, you can also get we're not going to get into the biomechanics of this, but when your arm is abducting, as this arm rolls up, you see that the acromion uh, forms a shelf right over that, and you can get a lot of impingement syndromes um, between the subacromial bursa or the, the supraspinatus uh, tendon itself and the rotator cuff because it impinges on that acromion when you're moving your arm around. Um, that's something you'll cover in clinical. I'll go back to this in a little bit, but also I talked about this intertubercular groove. This would be a good place to throw it in. You've got the lateral lip of the intertubercular, intertubercular groove, the floor of the intertubercular between the two tubercles groove, and then the um, medial uh, lip of the um, intertubercular groove on the anterior surface of the humerus. So the lateral uh, lip is where you're going to see the insertion of the pec major, right? So that's going to be pec major. And then the medial lip you're going to have coming from the posterior aspect of the uh, armpit, forming the rear wall of the axilla, is going to be your teres major. All right, so you have pec major on the outer lip or lateral and teres major on the inner lip or medial. And then inserting between those two muscles up from the lower part of your back on the floor of that groove will be the latissimus dorsi. So you basically have a major, a miss, and a major. And um, a clever little mnemonic device is to picture a park bench and uh, a little girl sitting between two, uh, two men in army uniforms. You have a miss between two majors. So major pectoralis, uh, little, miss, uh, little miss dorsi, and latissimus dorsi, and uh, major terrace sitting. So that's a little mnemonic to remember how they insert on that groove. And then of course over this entire thing would be the cap of the large deltoid muscle that sits down to that deltoid groove and would cover all of this. Boy that is a mess when I get done isn't it? Alright so that's a close up of the rotator cuff. Hope that helps uh, a couple of the previous videos and uh, assist you in any future videos. Alright uh, leave a comment, get some extra credit, and like Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, all that. Check out the rest of the videos in the anatomy playlist. If you're just sitting at home and you're interested in anatomy, the names of your body parts, how they fit together, or if you're uh, maybe taking a class somewhere and uh, your instructor says, you got to watch my videos. That's it.